passive rendering workloads. Offline final render engines differ in their VRAM consumption from active workloads. We've categorized passive rendering into CPU and GPU-based rendering as both have their own set of hardware requirements. CPU rendering. Since CPU rendering makes use of the processor's cores, there is little to no requirement of a graphics card, let alone one with large amounts of VRAM to ensure quick and bottleneck-free rendering performance. Focusing your budget on buying a CPU with as many cores as possible will ensure that you get the best performance in applications that use CPU-based 3D render engines like V-Ray, Corona, or Cinema 4D's physical renderer. GPU rendering. While GPU rendering is heavily dependent on your graphics card's processing power and compute capabilities, ensuring your project fits into the VRAM is essential for the graphics processor to operate at peak performance. Most GPU rendering engines like Redshift, Octane, and V-Ray show significant improvements in render times with larger amounts of VRAM, especially with scenes that employ a large number of polygons, high-resolution textures, and complex, GI, light cache, brute force, lighting. For simple scenes with low poly models and small resolution textures, running a GPU with 6 GB or even just 4 GB of VRAM can be sufficient. If you plan on rendering a more complex scene with higher resolution textures and many high poly objects and cloners, we recommend buying a GPU with at least 8 GB of VRAM to ensure the scene adequately fits into the graphics card memory and doesn't have to be offloaded out of core into the system's RAM, which slow things down considerably. Working with higher resolution outputs. Example print sized render resolutions will almost always require you to have a card with a sizable amount of VRAM as the render buffer complexity increases with the number of pixels even for scenes with just average complexities. For the most complex of projects, you will require a significant amount of VRAM. NVIDIA's Prosumer RTX 4090 is a good choice here, coming equipped with 24GB of VRAM. You could also go for a Quadro card like the Ampere RTX A6000 for the higher VRAM capacity, though you spend a considerable amount of money just for more VRAM and not necessarily processing capability. For render engines like Chaos Group's V-Ray that support the following feature, employing NVIDIA's NVLink can allow for VRAM pooling from multi ipl graphics cards. NVLink lets you render highly complex scenes without the need to buy a single expensive GPU with a high VRAM capacity, especially with NVIDIA's RTX 20 series cards featuring more widespread support for the feature. Some rendering engines like Redshift employ out-of-core rendering to get around potentially low capacities of VRAM. In Redshift, when a graphics card runs out of memory, the render engine will allocate the system memory instead. While this comes at a performance cost, some scene data, like textures, will perform similarly when loaded from the system's RAM, to loading from the GPU's VRAM. However, the supported data types are limited, and exceeding the VRAM by a significant amount can cause crashes. Engines like Octane that do not support the feature will crash due to insufficient VRAM, so depending on your software of choice, it might be better to invest in a powerful enough GPU to prevent any slowdowns. Summary, VRAM requirements for passive 3D workloads such as GPU rendering. Baseline, 6 to 8 gigabytes of VRAM, example, the RTX 2060 Super. Moderate complexity scenes, a GPU with 8 to 16 gigabytes of VRAM, example, the RTX 3060 Ti, RTX 3080. Highly complex scenes, a GPU with 24 plus GB of VRAM, example, RTX 4090, A6000, or multiple GPUs. We will continue about GPU VRAM videos, please wait for it. We will discuss all area about VRAM. Thanks for watching.